anyways, I have it on a body cam downloaded. Um, um sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just, I, I just turned it off right now. Okay. And I'm, like okay. I said, I'm not doing it to, I'm not recording you to, to back mm-hmm. you in a corner, okay? Mm-hmm. I understand. So what's going on? I don't really know what to say because I feel like every time I say something, I get people in trouble. I am. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to go through with this. I don't. I don't want. I understand that you're making a decision tomorrow, but I was told that there was supposed to be this meeting tomorrow. That you're asking certain people to come in to possibly be arrested. Okay, I, I told I told you this yesterday that. I was, I'm going to meet with Officer Crow in the morning, and we're going to put everything together and make it figure out if the decision that she made is the best decision. And, and that decision is, you know, that, that decision is Officer Crow's decision, but she indicated that there was some, you know, she had some questions, and there's some more information, and we're going to put it all. I'm going to let you know right now, okay, that I've watched... When Officer Crow w- responded to you and she met with you on Acme mm-hmm. Street, okay, you, right. she had her body camera on. You knew that she had her body camera on, okay? And she, yeah, she, she flipped it around. She flipped it she around, said. right. She flipped it around just so it's not recording your face and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But, okay. you know, per our policy, we still have to have our body camera on, okay? Right. And right. it recorded everything. And that's for her protection. That's for your protection. Right. But I'm going to let you know right now that she did a really good job. And yeah. she wasn't lying to you when she said that, you know, she's been in your shoes before. Okay. And right. that interview that, that it wasn't even an interview. That was a very personal thing that she had with you. And you right. guys, you guys yeah. shared a lot of the same experiences. Okay. Right. And you were upset. You're very upset. Okay, and you don't need to tell you don't need to tell her who the name is of this guy. It's obvious that what you said was very compelling. Okay, and not only that, you recorded the whole incident, and I could I could actually hear it th- the, through the recording of the recording. Does that make sense? Like you were playing her some sort of recording. Oh yeah, yeah. I could yeah. hear that, and it's it's obvious that you're crying out for help. You may not want to go through the process, and you don't need to be willing to do that. But the police wouldn't be doing their job if we said, okay, we're not going to do this. Because that's, not how, that's ha- not how domestic violence laws work. Okay? Mm-hmm. Jeremy is toxic. Okay? Now, I don't know enough about you to say that you guys are made for each other. But the little that I do know about you, you do mm-hmm. not deserve this. There's no reason that anybody should be raising their voice to anybody else in a relationship than hitting them, okay? Regardless right. of the circumstances, I don't know. Your, I don't know your situation, but we can help you, okay? Right. I know that you don't want to participate in this, all right? And what I explained to Jeremy is that if you step in my way, and I find out about it. We're gonna have He's a not doing that. Okay. He he hasn't done that. Okay. I, everything I'm saying is what I feel. He's not doing anything like that. <sighs> okay. Well, that's what I explained to Jeremy on the phone. Okay. We had a long, mm-hmm. we had almost an hour long conversation last night on the phone. All right. All right. And I told him that. Um, I explained to him the difference between, you know, filing the case with the state attorney's office and, mm-hmm. and a physical arrest and what the difference is. And, right. and I, ex- I explained to him that it, in, unless there's some other compelling information, something else that I discovered, which I, I don't know, I'm not there yet. Mm-hmm. The one thing I don't want him to do is to reach out to you and threaten you that if you do any, if you press charges, if you do anything like that, okay. Now you're saying he's not doing that and I believe you. But right. if I find out that that's not true, you know, if this is a cry for help right now, if you're telling me that, you know, you're afraid of him or anything like that, then we're going to have a problem. And I know that's not right. your intent, but. Right. But. No, I'm not afraid. I just. You need to worry just, about yourself. I know. Okay.
okay? Right. And like mm-hmm. Officer Cross explained to you, that, I mean, what is your 17-year-old kid going to say when he sees those bruises or he sees that, you, that you're that you upset? I mean, you can only lie to him for so long. Right. So... I understand, but that was just... You know, I I know, but he's not like that. I, I know I sound like every other stupid woman, but he's not like that all the time, and, you know, he is sorry for what he did, and... and not being like that all the time. So some of the time is okay? No, it's not okay, and I don't think he would ever do it again. I don't. Has he ever done anything like this before? Well, I can't really get into it. No. Okay. All right, I mean, that's, that's fine. You don't have to... Eat. I'm, I'm, if you're not going to answer right. that question, I understand. I understand. But I'm just letting you know right now that mm-hmm. this is something we deal with all the time. My unit... And the guys that I work with, we deal with this stuff all the time. Okay. And this is like, you know, sometimes this is nothing, but sometimes this is something big. This is like the precursor to something big. You know, Jeremy's under a lot of stress right now. Okay. Is that something that you're willing to risk? Is that your problem? He even said it's not your problem. He said that his business comes first. And yeah, your it always personal, has. And your personal issues come second. Is that fair? That's not fair. No. No, it, it isn't. I've I've always hated I've always hated it when he said that. Yeah, I know. It and you, and you can minimize this, you can continue to minimize it, you know, mm-hmm. and hopefully it is nothing, but you know, this is something that we deal with all the time. All right. And um you know, we, we actually have an investigator that works on our squad that her job is to deal with this stuff full time. Right. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, this could be nothing, but the police department takes it very seriously. Right. I understand. I mean, and, and, and uh, listen, I know what you're concerned about. And the other thing is Whitney. And um, uh, I was actually, I was actually in the middle of replying to your email that you just sent me right now. Um, oh, okay. As long as I can run her in the system and get her picture, like you, you know this girl, right? Tell me, your, yeah. Tell me your relationship with her. Well, she was on and off. She was a when I okay. So you know me and Jeremy went, met in 2018, and then I think she joined uh, Metro State in 2019. So me and Jeremy were pretty much done at that point. Um, And then she left right after the whole thing. I think after he was arrested the second time in October, I think is when she left. October uh, 2019 is when she left. And then she came back in April um, of 2020. And then she left and then she came back. So she she has her her own job. I guess she has a full-time job and this is just something she does part-time. So I don't know her. Um, She is best friends and to my knowledge, roommates with Jessica Bolden, who is Jeremy's ex-girlfriend. Um, and they found out that me and Jeremy were dating and then, you know, all hell broke loose because they, I guess they were under the impression that Jeremy hated me. Um, and that wasn't the truth. Um, and so, I mean, it's just, it's just two women who have not moved. One of them has nothing to do with anything that's Whitney and the other one just has never moved on. And so instead of getting angry with him, they're taking it out on me. All right. Tell me how to spell her name. Whitney. What's her last name? Uh, so there's, there's two last names. It's tool T O O L S hyphen Nichols N I C K O L S. All right. Did you get my email about the injunctions? Yeah. Okay. What, all right, last name again? How many times have you seen her before? Um, in person, twice. Okay. And then um, the incident that happened Sunday. So I guess that would be three times. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, on the job, I guess it would be twice. Um, would you be able to identify her? Yes, and I think I did that with Crow. Oh, you did? But, yeah, I would be, yeah, I, I would be able to identify her, yeah. Like, she showed you a picture? Yeah, she showed me a picture of her, um, her, I guess, her license or something. 
I don't remember that being in the report. Hang on a second. No, there's there's nothing mentioned here. Let me. I guess I'll have to talk about that with her tomorrow. Right. So yeah, it was a picture of her with like a ponytail or something, and she said, "Is this her?" And I said, "Yeah." So I'm guessing it's her license photo. Okay. All right. Um, so that. You know, it was the second part of the investigation. And, you know, if you want to press charges on her, I understand that. Then, you know, we'll file on that case, too. And I'm not trying to make a concession to you. I'm just letting you know that you you desire prosecution. If you didn't desire prosecution for her, that's fine. We wouldn't file. But because it's domestic violence and you and Jeremy are in a relationship and there's, you know, I presume there's intimacy expected... You know, that's kind of the definition. You may not live together, but you guys are in a relationship and there's, you know, you guys are dating. It it kind of falls on the same lines of the definition of domestic violence in a domestic relationship, okay? So, you know, I, I, I keep going back to your, to your encounter with Officer Crow. That was pretty compelling. It wasn't as if, you know, you weren't telling the truth there. Okay, and Jeremy seems to think that you, um, well, I don't know if he knows that you filed, that you filed a police report because it's all blanked out, but he says that I don't understand. I mean, he says I signed, like I signed some, I don't remember. I remember she gave me like Harbor House paperwork and then she gave me a confidentiality, but I don't know if, did I sign? Yeah. I did sign. There's a, there's a statement here. Was it the one that's on the the white sheet and the yellow sheet and the that one? Mm. Is that? Yep. Is that what I did? Yep. Oh my god! I don't. Well, know. That's yeah, crazy. you got some. There's some domestic, you know, intimate partner stuff here, and you right. you you checked a lot of stuff here that indicates there's a problem. Okay, I'm gonna be completely. I didn't know that was a part. I didn't know that was a part of the question she asked me. I didn't know that was a part of the police report. I thought there was just something that goes to Harbor House or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't include it in the police report, but I'm going to, oh. you know, I'm, it's not going to, you know, there's vic- victim confidentiality stuff here. Um, none of that stuff, that stuff is just maintained by us. And it's, you know, so if someone were to come to the police station and record and, and request these records, be like, ah, nope, sorry. And that's why... I'm, I'm presuming that's why you requested the report and everything was redacted. I didn't request it. He did. We were in the vehicle together. He wanted to see all of the reports. And so Officer Crow, I told her that he was trying to get them. And she said, well, don't worry. They're not going to let him have it. We get on the phone. Well, he's on the phone with records. They tell him everything. They tell him there's a, a report with me and him. And they tell him the, the report number. They say, oh, just come into the station you can get it and i'm like what in the how is this even possible and so they gave it to him but it was all blacked out thank god but i, I still can't believe they even allowed him to. yeah um i mean public records laws that's how they work so they okay. will re- they will pretty much redact everything they'll, they'll show that there's a police report yeah i mean you're but it's not gonna list any names any any of the details of the report that you that you spoke about with Officer Crow. But, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. When I was on the phone with Jeremy yesterday, I mean, part of it was asking him if this really happened and challenging him with the, with the evidence. And he's, I mean, he's fairly pissed off, rightfully so, but yeah, still, yeah. I still got to do my job. And if you're, you, you've, you've made an allegation all right, and he's denying it. He's like, no, none of this, none of this ever happened. All right. I, I mean, I was, I should have said that too, <laughs> or I should have said we weren't dating. That's what I should have done. What I would suggest to you is that mm-hmm. you get yourself out of the situation, and I, and and I'm saying that because. You know, you're going to keep minimizing this to the point where you don't know any different. And then it's going to be too late. Who knows what's going to happen? You know? 
He, and a guy like Jeremy, he can't afford to have any contact with police, whether good, it's good or bad. And I also explain that to him. I'm like, if you're going to get in the middle and break up, get in the middle of a fight, you better be ready to tell your story right away, which he did not. The police had to come to him. Well, I told him to stay and because yeah, I wanted left. to make the report, and he and he left. And who does that? Who? What kind of person? Gonna, what kind of person I leaves? I know. And and he knew in his head that he can't have any negative contact with the police, and he's relying on you to stick up for him. Yeah. And he's in your head, okay? So and that's, you know. If you had to put this on, like, a scale of how bad this is, like, it's pretty bad. If he's in your head and you and he, he, he he's pretty confident that you're going to stick up for him and lie, that's pretty bad. Okay? I'm not your dad. I, I'm not trying to be your brother, your best friend. I'm, this is my job. And this is the, this is the absolute um, most that I can do for you is protect you. And this is how I'm going to protect you. Does that make sense? So he's going to be arrested. It's basically I, I don't what know. I honestly don't know. I don't have all the information. Well, my question is, and to go back to wanting prosecution, I, I, I or not, well, not prosecution, but pressing charges. I'm, I'm trying to get in contact with Sergeant Great. I guess he's not in today. And Bronskill, I'm, I'm guessing you know those people. Mm-hmm. Um, Lieutenant, yeah. Right. And so the whole situation with the car and them chasing me, and I'm on the 911 call the entire time. Officer Leaf is saying that she's not going to do anything about it. No one ever talked to me. No one ever listened to the 911 call. Go ahead. Okay. So when I said no one, I mean the sergeant. Whenever it's followed up, no one. I'm going, to tell Go ahead. You, I'm going to tell you right now, that's not how we operate. Okay. Right. Two things, right? In domestic violence cases, we don't ask victims if they want to press charges. That's one. Right. Two. Right. Two. Prosecution, I, I don't need, even if it wasn't domestic violence, I don't need to ask someone, you know, if they're pressing charges. Think about a homicide victim, someone who I can't even ask that. Mm-hmm. All right? Do, do you think mm-hmm. their family wants prosecution? And you know where prosecution mm-hmm. happens? That happens um, beyond the level of police. That happens when it gets to the state attorney's office, the whole trial process or court process. Right. That's when prosecution happens. Right now... If I have reason to believe that a crime was committed, then I act. No, I, I understand that. But what I'm saying is another crime, a bit, well, to me, a bigger crime where I'm being stalked and followed and I'm on a 911 call for 12 to 15 minutes because Jessica and Whitney is following me, going through red lights, <laughs> uh, bumping my car, right, driving on the wrong side of the, of the street, trying to get to me. And they're saying, oh, this is informational. And I said to her, I said, do you want, I said, do you realize that they could have killed me and you're telling me this is informational? Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to get. Go ahead. Did you, when did you report that? Is that what you reported to? to on Officer Sunday. Lee? Yes. Okay. I, I, I'm on 911 the whole time. I think I was even recording it. I'm on 911 the whole time. These two, and I'm trying to be calm. These two lunatics are following me. And I don't mean like, oh, you know, there are three cars behind. I mean, one is behind me, the other's on the right. One is on the left, one is on the right. Well, like it's a freaking like Fast and the Furious show or something. It's it's insane, and they're going on the wrong side of the road. They're going through red lights to get to me for that long, and they're telling me they're not going to do anything about it. I thank God the judge gave me the restraining orders. I don't even know what that's going to do. <laughs> okay, somebody will reach out to you at some point, and I'm going to find out whose case that is, and I'll follow up on that. Pretty serious, all right. I, again, I, I hope to have that information tomorrow morning um, when I meet with Officer Crow. Okay. Okay. But you know, my my priority now, yeah, is is to you know protect you from the violence of Jeremy. Okay. Be completely honest with you. But it was just, I understand. Listen, you can, you can continue to minimize that, that 
minimize it. It's your choice. You don't mm -hmm. want to press charges. I am going to document that, that you don't want to press charges. And that I did not ask you that. And Officer Crow did not ask you that. All right? Because mm -hmm. it's in our policy that we don't ask domestic violence victims if they want to press charges. It, it has no bearing on whether we investigate the case. Mm -hmm. The goal of the investigation is to figure out if there was a crime committed. And if there was a crime committed, then then somebody's going to be held accountable. Okay. All right? And you just have to figure out if you're going to continue to be around Jeremy and continue that relationship, you know, I hope you stay safe. And if there is violence, I hope you tell someone about it, whether it's family or friends or the police before it's too... If it, if it gets to the point where it's too late, hopefully it's before then. Does that make sense? Yeah. I hate, I hate assuming the worst, but... You know, no one deserves to be in a relationship like that. I, I don't believe that that's the first time that that's happened. Because generally it doesn't go to that extreme. And just from what I heard on the audio recording of an audio recording, that does not seem like it's the first time. Because he's like, I've told you before. <laughs> you know? So. I mean, can I ask? Why do you want him to come in and not me? I don't. I, I never I never said I wanted him to come in. Oh, then he lied to me then. Well, I mean, I called him. He left me a voicemail after we spoke yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. So I left after we spoke. Right. And then I checked my voicemail this morning, and he's like, it's 426. I need you to call me back. So just like you... You know, to protect him and me in, in case our, our speaking ever comes into question, I tell him I'm going to record him. All right? He doesn't right. have to speak with me. All right? But really, when you're calling the police, do you expect to be recorded, Jennifer? No. I mean, maybe I'm naive. Okay. Well, I, I didn't, I mean, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Some people just don't realize it, but, you know, the body cams yeah. and everything like that, record. Oh, that. When you yeah. call 911, you figure you're going to be course. recorded, right? Yeah. Yeah. I tell you. Mm -hmm. Right. So he doesn't want to talk to me. And I'm like, okay, I understand. But I'm not, and I tell, I'm tell him the same thing. I'm not trying to use it against him. But, you know, if worst case scenario, he's, he's saying that I said something different or I'm saying that he said something different. Mm -hmm. There's evidence of, of what we talked about. Okay. Right. So he says he doesn't want to talk to me on a recorded line. He would rather come to talk to me in person and he wants to be off the record. I'm like, I don't do that. There's no police officer. Oh, that, is that what he said? Yes, uh, he wants it to be off the oh. record. And I said, you can come to the police station and speak with me in the lobby. It's recorded anyways. Oh, and really? he's like, well, I don't want to do that. And then I'm just walking into uh, something along the lines. I'm just walking into being arrested. And I'm like, okay, well. Oh, yeah. see, what he told me, and I'm not trying to say anything. I hope what I'm saying is okay. Mm -hmm. he, he said that you guys wanted him to come in because you may be arresting him. That's what he told uh, me. If it comes down, listen, if it comes down to an arrest warrant, and I don't know that it will, I told him I'd, right. be, I, I told him I'd be transparent with him. I'll, I'll call him and tell him. I don't think anybody wants to, to come into his business and embarrass him. Why not just right. take care of it or do a walk-in? Right. Uh, I'm not, we're not that type of police. We don't, we're not going to be like, oh, you don't have a warrant, and then, you know, I'll, I'll tell him. I mean, for right. one, it's a misdemeanor. It's not okay. It's not a felony, okay? Oh, okay? Unless I discover something different. All right? Yeah, it's going to suck. He's going to go to jail. I don't know if this is going to happen. I'm giving you worst-case scenario, okay? Sure. But we're not going to come like... I'm not going to send the U.S. Marshals after him. All right? Right. Yeah. All right? Yeah. All right. I, I'm, I don't know if that, that's... I don't know that that's the route we're going to take. But I'm going to mm -hmm. talk about it with Officer Crow tomorrow. Okay. Um, I just tried like some basic things to search for mm -hmm. um, Whitney. What's the other girl's name? Uh, just. I have their information. Okay. What is it? Oh, let me get it. Um, like their um, driver's license information and stuff, or date of birth, or whatever what do you want? You have whatever you have.
Okay. Um, Whitney, um, her date of birth is and yeah, uh, T as in and this is for Whitney. Right. Okay. And then what about Jessica? I just need to uh, her if, you, if you have it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, B as in boy. Oh. All right. Let me run this really quick here. Hang on. Okay, describe Whitney for me. Um, black female, um, brown skin. I don't. <laughs> uh, her oh her oh she's like my height. I'm like five three. She's probably like five four five five. She's larger than me. She's probably like close to two hundred. Okay. Hang on a second. And then describe Jessica for me. Um, she's also brown skinned. She's taller. She's like five seven, five eight, and she's thin. Okay. Um. And these are the two girls that were like, they were following you and bumping into your cars on Sunday. Right, Jessica, this- the most aggressive one, and Whitney had a weapon. Where did this happen? I was at the office, 1718 Acme. I was opening up the door for one of the contractors named Andrew. Um, I can't remember his last name, but I can look it up. I can't remember his last name, but Andrew was there um, because Jeremy was at home with the baby. Jeremy ended up coming over anyway. I had already opened up the door for um, Drew. And so they left because Jeremy and Drew were going to do the escort. I was in the car. Jeremy had called me on three-way because he was talking to a woman who Jessica Bolden is sleeping with her husband. It's a long, it's always drama. Anyway, so I was on three-way with them. And then that's when uh, Whitney showed up first. And then maybe like a minute later, Jessica Bolden showed up. So Whitney was on my right in the parking area. And then Jessica Bolden was on my left. And then I started the car. And then that's when they started chasing me. And when I, I like to put emphasis on chase because it wasn't like I said, like, oh, there's three or four cars behind uh, tailing me, like, you know, like a spy. They're literally on my bumper. And Jessica Bolden was the most aggressive, but Whitney was the one that had. Uh, sorry, go ahead. She had what? She had a weapon. She got there first. Like I said, she had opened up her car door what and she had, it looked to me like a handgun. It, well, it was a handgun. It was a, a dark handgun with small. I don't know the caliber. I'm, I've probably shot once or twice in my entire life, so I don't know how big, it, you know, like the the size of it. I just know when I say size, I mean the caliber of. Is that how? Gun, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know what type of gun. <laughs> what type so of gun it was? This, you saw this when? Yes, yeah, so and I when she opened up the door and she swung. She like took her seatbelt off. Well, I don't even know if she took her seatbelt off, but she swung her legs down so her feet were. Um, facing me, like they were facing my passenger door. Because she's did she, on. Did the, she threaten you with it? Did she say anything to you while she? No, she it? did. She had it, and then she she was holding it with her right hand, and she had her phone in her left hand. I didn't know who she was talking to. I immediately texted nine one one because I had the windows down because my, the car wasn't cranked up yet, so I had the windows down. But I didn't want her to hear me talking to nine one one, so that's why I texted nine one one, and I was telling them what was going on. Okay. Well, it sounds like you already know who these girls are, so it makes my job a whole lot yeah. easier. So let me wait for that report to come in. Uh, yeah. And did you did you identify these people to the officer? I did to um to uh, a great sergeant, a great. He had his laptop or whatever, and then. So a great and another a great to sergeant was he there yeah. with another officer? He was there with Leaf Khadijah Leaf. I, because I called him, I, I asked for him because at first they looked at me, the officers that were there looked at me like they didn't want to do anything. And I'm like, did you just hear what I told you? <laughs> did, I was on a 911 call for, for almost 15 minutes being chased. I, I went from 
I went from OPD's jurisdiction into Orange County back into OPD. That's how much they were chasing me because 911 yeah. kept rerouting yeah. the call. Because, These girls? Um, I have it. I, just as I have them, I think I have some written down somewhere. I don't have it on me. But Whitney, I have. It's 4, 407. Because it's easy to remember. It's 407. Uh-huh. I can email you just I think I have it. I'm not sure. Yes. Okay. And they, you know, the officers were asking, they're like, well, what is this about? And I'm like, it's about the fact that she used to date Jeremy. That's over. It's been over a year. She hasn't moved on. And Whitney has nothing to do. Some people, and I'm not trying to be like, I'm not saying I'm the most perfect person in the world. But some people, when there's a chance to be violent, they'll join in because they, they can, because they, they are just, that's the type of person that she is. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll start, re- I'll start researching it and I'm definitely, you know, I'm going to see if I can get Whitney's side of the story and, and Jessica's side of the story. Okay. Um, um, I can email you her number if I find it. Okay. Yeah. So. It, Email me her number. Um, mm-hmm. I'm also gonna reply to your to email you just sent me, and I'm gonna ask you if yeah. these are the girls. Was it? Was it? I wasn't trying to be rude, by the way. I hope I didn't come across as rude in the email. No, you did. Okay, that's fine. And okay. If, no, and you know, I mean, we we have thick skin. If you're if you're right. rude, you're rude. It's not a big deal. Right. Um, right. But I'll reply to it, um, and I'm gonna basically ask you: Is this is this Jessica and th- is this Whitney? Because I kind of okay. need to figure out. I know you know who they are, and I know who they are, but I need you, ad- you to identify them fully. So, Okay. And, th- and that's, again, that's going to be second to my investigation, to the, I to the whole Jeremy thing, okay? Right? I understand. Yeah, I understand. Y- you know, y- you don't need to discuss what we're talking about on the phone with him. I understand. I know. I know. I just, the only, the only thing is that, you know, and I, and I don't want, again, I want to be very careful about what I say. He's not persuading me to do anything. It's just that, you know, he told me that you guys were asking him and maybe he just said that to kind of, you know, make sure I, you know, didn't do anything. I don't know what he's doing, but he told me that you guys wanted him to come in tomorrow. And I said, well, I will go in there tomorrow with you. I said, let me talk to him because he said that you guys are trying to arrest him tomorrow. But yeah. obviously, that's not. Exactly I don't know. True. I, I don't. Honestly, I don't know. I mean, the decision that Officer Crow made was to not arrest and and right. file the paperwork in lieu of physical arrest, and that right. may that may be an appropriate decision. But neither one of us have all the information. When we when I spoke to her yesterday, it's like, hey, by the way, did you know about this? I'm like, no. So. Mm. All right. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't know what else to tell you. No, I understand. I understand. But Jeremy is a very manipulative guy, all right? He, yeah. You know, I've I've spoken to him many times over the last couple of years, and mm-hmm. man, he is he is a he's very well spoken. He knows his stuff, mm-hmm. and you know he definitely there's a he's got a method to his madness, and he pushes buttons and he does it, and you know he's an alpha. Mm-hmm. So I think what he's doing is. Trying to get you. Obviously, he, you called me, right. and you straighten it out. And he's going to want to know at some point what we talked about and what you know because he's worried about himself. He's not worried about you. He's worried about himself. Okay. I'm sure you know that. So, um, I I will try. You may reach me before I reach you tomorrow, but hopefully, I'm going to meet with Officer Crow at about 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, and we're going to figure out what we're going to do. Okay. So, um, I'm, I told Jeremy I'll be completely transparent with him, whatever decision, and I'll, I'll let you know, too. Okay. All Will right. you tell him first? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 I mean, unless I need more information from you. But, yeah, I'll probably tell him first. Okay. Well, can I just say one or ask yeah. one last thing? And I don't know if I've asked. It's been since 
October 31st to now, it, everything has just been really crazy. <laughs> and I just don't remember if I asked you this. Is there a reason why it cannot just go to the state? I mean, if it's going to the state either way, that's all I'm asking. Um, I mean, there are many, said, oh, sorry, God. many factors. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's up to the officer when we're dealing with a misdemeanor. We got to make sure it's a misdemeanor and make sure there's not any any other violence, which I haven't really researched too much, but, um, you know, if, if there's no propensity of violence, continued violence and, you know, um, it, it appears that we have to make sure that the decision we make is not going to put you in jeopardy. It won't. I, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> I know, I know. I sound stupid. I know I sound. It's stupid. not that you sound I stupid. I just, I, no one, no one has said that. You yeah. know. Let me ask you a question. If you confided in your best friend about this that doesn't know Jeremy or doesn't like Jeremy, what do you think your best friend would tell you to do? I know what they would tell me to do, but <laughs> at the very least, they would tell you to pack your stuff and get the hell out of there. Yeah. To end it. Yeah. So, all right. I mean, that's that's just the bottom line. We got to make sure the decision we make is not gonna um, is not gonna affect you. I know, but I I spoke to the the National Domestic Violence Hotline, and I know that doesn't matter. But when I spoke to one of the ladies, she told me, you know, you don't always. Uh, maybe this is the wrong advice, but she said you don't always have to call the police. She said sometimes you can just go, you can just leave. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. and it doesn't have to be like this because if it's going to be, it's going to ruin everything. <laughs> it will ruin everything. His, uh, he, I'm not trying to be rude, but it will ruin the cases that he has right now that could possibly be suppressed or dropped or whatever. It will. He will never get out of prison. What about you? <laughs> right. What about you? And that's all that's that. I mean, he's got you so brainwashed, unfortunately, that you don't even think about yourself. He told you he, he's got an implant in your head that you come second. His business comes first. I heard it straight from the recording that you were playing for Officer Crow. Yeah. All right. I mean, you you absolutely don't have to call the police. You can call the you can call you know a victim advocate. You can speak to them about mm-hmm. it. But you know, I'm not trying to turn you off from ever calling the police because the police are the only people that can solve the problem right then and there. Right. They're I not going to you you call the phone you call, you call the national domestic violence hotline. It's going to be someone to talk to, and they're going to get you services, and they're going to get you a place mm-hmm. to stay if you need it. But mm-hmm. what if you can't leave? What if, you know, what if, what if, what if, and that's where the police come in, okay? So I don't want you to be afraid to call the police because you're afraid we're going to make a decision that's going to ruin Jeremy. That's not fair. It's really not fair. It's not fair to you. All right. Yeah. So. thank you. Yeah, no problem. We'll we'll talk tomorrow, okay? All right. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. 1333. Sergeant! You wrote it. You signed it. End of story. Dear... Whether they told you to write it, or a leprechaun fucking told you to write it. You wrote it. You signed it. It's a false statement.